on January 14th, 1891, in Guadalupe, Mexico. Miguel Augustin Pro Juarez was the oldest son of Miguel Pro and Joseph Juarez. Megbolito, as his doting family called him, was from an early age intense and spiritual, and equally intense in his mischievousness, frequently exaggerating his family with his humor and practical jokes. As a child, he had a daring creep code that sometimes went too far, tossing him to near-death accidents and illnesses. On regaining consciousness after one of these episodes, young Miguel opened his eyes and blurted out to his frantic parents, I want some cocoa! A colloquial term for his theory to speak friend. Cole Cole became his nickname, which he would later adopt as a codename during his clandestine ministry. Go! Miguel was particularly close to his oldest sister after she entered a cloistered convent. He came to recognize his own vocation to the priesthood. Although he was popular with the senoritas, and had prospects of a lucrative career managing his father's thriving business, Miguel renounced everything in Christ, his king, and entered the Jesuit Novitiate in El Lano in 1911. Yes, he did. He studied in New Mexico until 1914, when a tidal wave of anti-Catholicism crashed down upon Mexico. Forcing the numbers to settle, to disband and flee the United States, where Miguel and his brother, seminarians, trekked through Texas and New Mexico before arriving at a distant house in Los Gatos, California. In 1915, Miguel was sent to a cemetery. Uh, no, he, he was sent to a seminary in Spain, where he remained until 1924 when he went to Belgium for his ordination to the priesthood. Miguel suffered from a severe stomach problem, and after three operations, when his health had not improved, his superiors in 1926 allowed him to return to Mexico in spite of the great religious persecution of that country. The churches were closed and priests went to hiding. <laughs> Miguel spent the rest of his life in a secret ministry to study Mexican thought and In addition to fulfilling their spiritual needs, he also carried out the works of mercy by assisting the poor in Mexico City with their temporal needs. He adopted many interesting disguises in carrying out his secret ministry. He would come in the middle of the night dressed as a beggar to baptize infants, bless marriages, and celebrate mass. He would appear in jail as the police officer to bring holy victuia to condemn Catholics. When going to fashionable neighborhoods to procure for the poor, he would show up at the doorstep dressed as a fashionable businessman with a fresh flower on his lapel. His many exploits could rival those of the most daring spies. And all that he did, however, as R. Pro, he made obedient to his superiors and was filled with the joy of serving Christ. This king. His companions, Father Polito, said that had never seen such an exquisite wit. Never, of course, always smart. He was noted for his charity and ability to talk about spiritual subjects without being bored. Father Polito remarked that there was two pros: the playful pro and the prayerful pro. He was known for long periods he spent in the chapel. Longtime president of Mexico. Piero Diaz was ousted in 1911 after staging a rigid re-election and a struggle for power. The Mexican Revolution began. Pro studied in Mexico until 1914 when a massive wave of governmental anti-Catholicism forced the Novotile to dissolve and the Jesuits to flee Los Gatos, California in the United States. He then went to study in Granada, Spain and then taught in Nicaragua from 1919 to 1922. Back in Mexico, a new constitution for the country had been signed. Five articles of the 1917 constitution were particularly aimed at suppression of the Catholic Church. All right. Article three mandated secular education in schools, prohibiting the church from participating in primary and secondary education. Article five outlawed monistic religious orders. Article 24 forbade public worship 
outside of church buildings. While Article 27 restricted religious organizations' rights to own property. Finally, Article 130 took away basic civil rights of members of the clergy, priests, and religious were prevented from wearing their habits, were denied the right to vote, and were not permitted to comment on public affairs in the press. Most of the anti-clerical provisions of the Constitution were removed in 1998, where his theological studies was sent to Inheim, Belgium, where the French Jesuits, also in exile, mm -hmm. had their faculty of theology. His health continued to deteriorate. There was ordained a priest on August 31st, 1925. He wrote on that occasion, How can I explain to you the sweet grace of the Holy Spirit, which evades my poor mind and soul? With such heavenly joys, I could not keep back tears on that day of my ordination. Above all, the moment when I pronounced together with the bishop the words of the consecration. After the ceremony, the new priests gave their first blessing to their parents. I went to my room, laid out all the photographs of my family on the table, and then blessed from them from the bottom of my heart. His first assignment as a priest was to work with the miners of Charleroi, Belgium. Despite the socialist and communist tendencies of the workers, he was able to win them over, preach the gospel to them. Wow. A rest of execution. A failed attempt to assassinate Alboro Abragan, which only wounded him in November 1927, provided the state with a pretext for arresting Pro again. This time, with his Jesus! Friends, Humberto and Roberto. A young engineer who honestly confesses part of the assassination testified that the Pro brothers were not involved. Miguel and his brothers were taken to the detective inspector's office in Mexico what? City. On November 23rd, 1927, Father Pro was executed without trial. President Calais gave orders to have Pro executed under the pretext of this assassination, but in reality, for defying the virtual outlawing of Catholicism. 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 Technetium. Calais had the execution meticulously photographed, and the newspapers throughout the country carried them on the front page of the following. Presumably, Callus thought that the sight of the pictures would frighten the Cristera rebels, rebels, not rebels, who were fighting against his troop, particularly in the state of Jalisco. However, they had the opposite effect. Father Pro and his brothers were visited by Generals Roberto Cruz and Palermo Lopez around 11 p.m. on November 22nd, 1927. The next day, as Father Pro walked from his cell to the courtyard in the firing squad, he blessed the soldiers. I lost my place. Now and briefly played quietly. Didn't play, he prayed. Disclining a blindfold, he faced executioners with a crucifix in one hand and a rosary in the other, and held his arms out in imitation of the crucified Christ and shouted out, May God have mercy on you! May God bless you, Lord! Thou knowest that I am innocent with all my heart and forgive my enemies! Oh, God. Before the firing squad were ordered to shoot, Pro raised his arms, in imitation of Christ, and shouted the defiant cry of the Cristeros, Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. When the initial shots of the firing squad failed to kill him, a shoulder shot him at Point Blank Range. Caldas is reported to have looked down upon a throng of 40,000 which lined Pro's funeral procession, and another 20,000. Wait at the cemetery where he was buried, not a priest present, his father saying the final words. The Cristeros became more animated and fought with renewed enthusiasm, many of them carrying the newspaper photo of Pro. Before the firing squad. All right, go. go. Neither suffering nor serious illness. Neither the exhausting ministerial activity, frequently carried out in difficult and dangerous circumstances, can stifle the radiating and contagious joy which he brought to this life for Christ, which nothing could take away. Indeed, the deepest root of self sacrificing surrender, the lowly, was his passionate love for Jesus Christ and his ardent desire to be conformed unto him, even unto death. We'd like to thank everybody for watching our video. 
piece of a town, we ain't shaving.